perfectly on time, nine o'clock. People uh, firstly, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. How are you? All good. All good. All good. Um, 4.30 Sunday is a very big moment, I guess, for you. Your Anfield career as Liverpool manager begins. Um, just wonder how much you're looking forward to it and what you're expecting. It's not going to be the first taste because we played uh, Sevilla already, but uh, it's clear that it's the first uh, league game at Anfield and um, looking forward to it, but I'm looking forward to every game uh, I've played in the past as a manager and also to, uh, to this one. Yeah. It's going to be a big crowd, probably twice as big as the one you played in front of last Saturday. Um, how, how do you manage the nerves? Are you, are you a nervous manager? I hope they are twice as loud as the Ipswich crowd because the Ipswich crowd was really, really, really loud. So um, I'm hoping the fans can be twice as loud then as the Ipswich ones. That would be a, a big help for us. But no, I'm not nervous at all. Certainly not at this moment because I'm in the middle of preparation. Uh, prepare the team for Sunday and actually, um, no, nerves are not there. No. Not even at 4.25 on Sunday? No, no, no. No, it wouldn't be a good, uh, a good thing. If you've got nerves, then probably you don't trust what you did before. You just don't trust your team. and. Um, I trust what we as a staff do during the whole week to prepare the team in the best possible way and I trust the team a lot as well, again on Sunday. I know you've been asked in recent weeks about new signings and, and obviously you've been reluctant mm. to, to talk about them. Um, Mohamed Ashvili, is, is that a deal that's, that's going on very close to being done? Uh, I think you know already the answer. So um, if, if a deal is done, then you will hear from us. Until that moment, we don't speak about uh, transfers or players that are not ours. You don't seem worried at all by any lack of activity. No, because I trust the team. And um, I've said many times before, I inherited a real good team, a team of many young players as well. And I think we all know that especially young players can develop at, at the ages they are on at the moment. So we just try to work as hard as we can with them. And we trust them a lot. And they've, they've, they've proven last week that they earned this trust. And I'm hoping that they show the same on Sunday again. Good luck. Enjoy the day. Thank you. I will. Um, just going on from, from that theme, there was such a, a difference in terms of the first half performance versus the second half performance. How do you feel uh, you are getting on in terms of being able to explain to the players what it is you want from them and then them buying into that? I think we're we're on a good track, if, that, if that's the way to say it. So, um, but we have to understand that some of them are only here for three weeks, uh, and there's quite a large part of our group is with us for three weeks. So, um, and it's not only about us; it's also about the opponent, what they bring into the game. And I think um, I said it before that Ipswich put a lot, a lot, a lot of energy in the first half to make it really difficult for us, and um, or. We stepped up, or Ipswich was, were not able to keep bringing the same energy in the second half, and um, it, I think it was a bit of both. And uh, we got a bit more space, and then you can see how well these boys can play. But um, there's still a lot, a lot of work to do. But uh, it's, it was a good first uh, first step, especially the second half. Um, and in making substitutions at half time, when you look at the quality of the bench that you've got, it must be great to see that those options that you have. But in, in making sure that you are not afraid to make substitutions, are you partly learning more about the squad that you have, but also trying to create some competition? Oh, I'm learning every day still of, uh, uh, about these players, about the individuals, and also how they cooperate with each other. So. Um, and um, for me, the last week was not only important on Saturday, the Sunday was also really important because I learned and saw there that the ones that didn't play on Saturday were able to bring a really good training session in on Sunday. And I think that is one of the most, not one of the most, that's a really important thing for a team as well because we all know that we're going to need many, many, many of them during the season for a lot of uh, game minutes. And um, they brought in a really good training session on Sunday. And... Um, that that will help them and us for the rest of the season. And yes, I am still learning new things about the players, which is normal, because like I just said, with some of them I only work for three weeks, so uh, still seeing new things from them. Uh, Arne, how is Joe Gomez? Do you feel like his head's in the right place for this weekend? Yeah, it's been in the right place for three weeks, so. Uh, 
He's worked really, really hard since he came back, but uh, he um, he didn't play a lot at the Euros. When he came back and in the first sessions we couldn't um, he couldn't train the whole uh, session, so we had to manage his load a bit, and that was also the reason why he wasn't in the team last Sunday. But this week he had a good week, so uh, in terms of uh, load, uh, how much he could do with the team. So. Um, yeah, he's one of the players that I uh, see new things from and, 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 and learn uh, things, what I see from him, also combined with other players. So uh, it's been a good week for him and for us still now. And the club have done some notable business with Brentford this window. Just wondering how much admiration you have for their model and how they go about things on the pitch as well. For Brentford, you mean? Oh, um, I think they, they, they brought in two really talented and good players. Uh, and then you could ask yourself the question, why do they leave? Now, the both of them have played a lot, a lot, a lot of minutes last season. And I think the both of them wanted to continue that journey of playing time. And um, I think they were able to play for us, but there were there was so much competition in the positions they play that they wouldn't play every minute of every single game. And um, then it was a good deal. It's a real good deal for us. And I think it's a good deal for Brentford and it's also a good deal for the players. So um, everybody happy unless they uh, <laughs> they do too well on Sunday. <laughs> do you admire the way Brentford play as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can oh. see that their manager is there for a long time already. They uh, in the last game against Crystal Palace they could play a four-four-two and could play a five-three-two, so they can change systems within a game. And I, I think that's hardly impossible if you work with a group for three, four, or five weeks. Let alone maybe even after a year, it's still not possible. Because it's so difficult to br to bring the best out of them in one system, so if you can play two systems with them, yeah, you have to uh, make the conclusion that uh, Thomas Frank is doing a real good job over there for re for a lot of years already, and um, and uh, they played a real good first game as well as well as a good preseason. So it's going to be uh, a challenge for us on Sunday again to play them. How has Gerard Kwanzaa reacted since being taken off at half time against Ipswich? In a way, you would expect the player to react. So I spoke to him immediately after the game. Uh, spoke to him the day after on Sunday, and in the end of that conversation, he asked if he could train the uh, Sunday. So normally he, d he should have done recovery. He wanted to train, and um, unfortunately, I think it was Tuesday that he picked up a bit of an injury, so he couldn't train on Wednesday. And let's see if he can train today. But he reacted in a in a way every player should react, but. I don't think there was that much into it, although uh, maybe the language was a problem because what I said was he did not lose every duel, but he lost one or two important ones, and one of them was just before half time. Um, and from what's been told to me, it's like that I've said that he lost every duel, uh, which he didn't. He he did not do. We as a team lost too many duels, and he he lost one or two as well. And this is also what I said to the team the day after. It was not about Jarrell, that we as a team didn't do well. But in my opinion, the only threat at that moment from Isfis was D-Lab, and he won one or two important uh, duels. And I was trying to get that strength out of their team by bringing in uh, Ibu. Mm. And you sold a couple of younger players this transfer window. Some fans might be concerned that you might be letting some promising talent go a little too soon. Do you understand where they're coming from? Yeah, that's always a difficult one because young players want to play as well and if they want to develop they have to play and it's always like this so they come through the ranks of the youth academy and either then you're good enough to play for as many minutes or you're still not there or there's too much competition in your position and uh, I think still this team, which what we have, have a lot of uh, homegrown players and, um, and, and one of them trainer only is also training with us on a daily basis but only 17 yet. So. Uh, this club will always bring good youngsters and uh, it's it's always a challenge to find the right moment either to play them or if they've played quite a lot of minutes they want to make the next step in their career and if that is not possible because Virgil van Dijk is playing here or Mo Salah is playing here or all the other top players are playing here then it's the best for them and also for the club to let them go. Um, because uh, you always want to take care of your own interest but you also have responsibility to do the players. And if they want to play somewhere and it's not possible for us with us, 
and they're not happy with five or six hundred minutes because these youngsters didn't play much Premier League games. They played a few games in the cup. Then, um, then you have to, um, in my opinion, let them develop somewhere else. Um, Virgil came in three weeks ago and uh, in my opinion he made a lot of impact uh, when he came back. So he made a lot of impacts in all these years he's played here but me working with him he's shown how much he cares about the team and how, how, how good he is. Um, but for him it's and the same with Mo like all the others they still have to bring their performances in. Uh, so in my opinion there are four players uh, having competition for two positions. Um, but at this moment, it's clear that Virgil is playing, and he's also going to play on Sunday if he's fit. And, um, you selected uh, Crumber as the sixth. Um, probably not a position played regularly throughout his career. What do you see as his qualities for that role? I think um, he brings in certain qualities which we like in that position, but he only played uh, uh, two games in that position and he did it in both times really well. So against United he played well, oh, three games though, against Sevilla and against Ipswich. Now only one of them was a, was a game that matters uh, in terms of a Premier League game. So he has a lot to prove in that position still, but uh, first, first games he did well. But like with all of them, it's not about the individual, it's always what the team around them do for him to play a good game because if all the other 10 were, would have played shit at Ipswich, I don't think Ryan would have been able to play a great game. Uh, and um, what he has is he has running capacity, so he can keep on running. He has a night height and he's really comfortable with the ball. So he has some attributes that he could play in that position, but still a lot to prove for him as for all the others. And um, we have other options in that position as well. So. Interesting uh, competition in many positions. Yeah. Any more for the backup? Oh, no. <coughs> Just on Joe Gomez, can I check them? Do you, if your understanding is you expect him to be here for this season, you're not expecting any movement? At this moment, I'm expecting everyone to be here. But like you know, you are maybe even longer in football than I am. Looking at you, you're a little bit older than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so everything can change. One thing I know for sure, Tony is longer in football than me. <laughs> yeah. That's it.